Hello and welcome to Starburst Magazine. I am James Magic Perkins and today I am joined by a very special guest. You may have heard his voice in titles such as Shin Megami Tensei 3 and World of Warcraft, but most recently, if you are a fan of the popular 4v1 game Dead by Daylight, you will have heard him taking on the iconic role of the legendary Resident Evil character Albert Wesker in the new DLC titled Project W. It's Connor Fogarty. Welcome, Connor. Thanks for having me, James. Fantastic. Now, thank you for uh, for chatting with us. I bet this uh, this first week since the DLC dropped has been quite the whirlwind for you. Yeah, it's it's been a whirlwind in a lot of ways. Um, you just my phone's been lighting up every few minutes, which is. Uh, it's an interesting surprise, but, uh, you know, it's, it's an adjustment, but uh, it, it's it's a fun one, too. So, yeah, I don't mind. Fantastic. And for those of our viewers who may not know uh, some of your work, can you uh, introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, um, my, well, I am Connor Fogarty. I'm a voice actor down in Los Angeles. I'm from Portland, Oregon. And before uh, Dead by Daylight, I've done voice roles in, I guess you mentioned, I've had a little merch right there, Shin Megami Tensei 3, the remaster of the original game that came out in the mid-2000s where they added voices. So I voiced Kikawa in that, who's one of the villains or your mentor, depending on your perspective and cho choices. Um, yeah, I've done some work in uh, World of Warcraft. I've done some work in dubbing, anime, and live action, and Fallout, did some voices in Final Fantasy. It'll all come to me at various points here, but yeah. <laughs> did some on-camera work up in the Northwest as well. Uh, did a little guest spot in Portlandia once, Fred mm -hmm. Armisen and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so I obviously you mentioned you've done some live action stuff as well. I yeah. did ha obviously uh, a bit of research before before chatting to you. Um, how? Because I've spoken to various people who have obviously worked both in front of the camera and behind a microphone. What would you say for yourself is the biggest difference or challenge or you know reward of doing both of those? Oh, sure. Yeah, no, it, it's really interesting because um, something like voiceover, you are you can be a fidgety weather vane, and as long as you're getting the character just kind of channeled, then you've got you've you've, you've got it done. And often there, you're filling in the blanks with your mind because, you know, there's nothing to see until it's animated, and then you're kind of you could be a collaborator with the animator um, because they're animating to you or if it's dubbing you're going off of the animation already whereas something like um uh live action you it's it's very much like let's sit in the space the camera is right here you can't move your head too much because that's going to look absurd even if you do that in real life a lot which i do um hashtag adhd um <laughs> but uh it, that's kind of fun too, because it's learning how to uh, give a lot with much less. And it's kind of like, just kind of trusting you can live in the small moment and the inflections are just gonna naturally come out based on how you feel. And there's gonna be that look in the eye. Whereas voiceover, they can't, they don't know what you look like at all. Hmm. And I would probably never play a lot of the same parts, you know, and vice, well, maybe I could voice a character that I could play in real life. Um, but, you know, voice things that I would never play in real life, I guess. Yeah, it opens up those so, so many different avenues of, of characters to explore, which I think is, yeah, it, it, it works both ways. And it, it's yeah. great that um, it's great that you're able to, you've been able to experience both ways and you've been able to, you know, pick a path that you're maybe more comfortable with currently uh -huh. or, or more interested in pursuing. But then all, there, yeah. there's a there's that chance that you can go back to to yeah. um, the other stuff in the future if you wanted to. Right. I kind of see it like, I'm, I'm a musician as well, and I kind of see it, it's like learning, if you know like music theory or you know the notes, it's like playing a different instrument. So mm -hmm. the way you attack the instrument, or maybe, you know, it's not an attack. You have to be very gentle with the instrument. It's like, that's what acting is. It's the same kind of knowledge and, you know, 
the core the core thing is still there, but if it's on camera versus voiceover, there's just a different application a little bit. But at the core, it's the same idea. Mm, absolutely. Um, so before we get into the meat of the conversation, which is of course the uh, Resident Evil Project W DLC for Dead by Daylight, what I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. Um, I wanted to get to um, know yourself a little bit better and. Sure ask you what or who was it that really made you want to pursue uh, a career in acting oh boy that's a great quite a, question quite a big question <laughs> but i you know i think um funny enough doing on camera was actually me just seeing first and foremost if i could act because voiceover was my <clears throat> as my voice goes out <laughs> uh, voiceover is, uh, it was like my first love and then doing like stage stuff in school and doing on a camera was just like, well, what, what more of this acting thing could I do? But I think some voiceover actors that really inspired me early on, I guess if I had to pick like a, a, a big three, it would be, uh, Corey Burton, who was in a lot of the like Hanna-Barbera stuff in the eighties. And he's still working constantly, even now. I mean, uh, he, he's well known as like being Count Dooku in like any sort of animated or video game Star Wars thing. Mm -hmm. He's been a narrator on a ton of stuff. He was like Shockwave in the first Transformers and among a bunch of other things. Him, D. Bradley Baker, who I feel like needs almost no introduction. Um, and David Kay, who I grew up with. Uh, BC was Clank and Ratchet and Clank, and then he was like Beast Wars Megatron as well. And that blew my mind. That was the same voice. So I think it was like seeing those name, that same name at the end of the credits as a kid, I'm like, how can that be the same guy? And I think just that sort of alchemy was like that, that just hooked me. And like, I mean, when I was about 11 or 10, IMDb was a thing. So I would like go there at a curiosity and just see like, oh, that guy's that guy. What else have they been in? And, you know, just funny that they like, you know, someone's name could be David and they could voice someone named Megatron. That just <laughs> seems like crazy to me too. I love that. Yeah, it still it still blows my mind to, to this day as well. Like I, I definitely uh, can relate with you there. You, you, you're watching uh, anime. I, I find it because I, I watch a lot more of my anime in in japanese and yeah okay I, yeah. I, I've, I've now got to a point where these voices are so recognizable and iconic one of them obviously being a yuki, uh, yuki kanji um mm, yeah. as 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 Aaron yeager and when i see yuki kanji's name turn up in other projects such as recently uh bubble and goodbye don glees that i've been covering for for the magazine and when i see um when I hear those voices, I'm like, I swear I know who that is. And then you see it in the, in the credits, you're like, know, wow, the, they've got such a range. And that, that I think shows if, if, if you feel that way about a performer, then they're a, they're a good voice actor. I mean, obviously yeah. it's great that people can do, you know, similar things, um, you know, it, essentially like typecasting in, in movies if you get that with yeah. animation that's uh, as, you know that's not to say that another it's not not to say that they're not a good voice actor but when they can when you can get that moment where you see their names in the credit and go what's that them that's that's crazy yeah. then yeah that yeah. really shows the the talent of uh of, of a performer they're, they're voicing several people in in one thing like futurama mm. it's got that like five or six core cast members and then mm. you're just like okay, who's who because they're like you know they got double digits you know each with all the characters they voice pretty much mm. yeah um so what would you say were some of your earliest memories of auditions when you first got into this uh, crazy career? Oh, boy. Um, you know, my first kind of stuff was up in uh, the Northwest a lot of the time. So uh, there was a lot of indie. I was doing a lot of, like, indie projects or auditioning for a lot of indie projects. And something like if you do it in the Northwest, you're going to get – in Seattle, you're going to get – there's commercials for Amazon, there's commercials for Microsoft, there's commercials for Boeing. I mean, I was too young, they were gonna take me for Boeing, but um, what am I gonna do with planes? But, and then if you go to Portland, there's a lot of shows going through. So you get like Portlandia, um, 
what else was there? Uh, Trinkets was a show some of my friends were on, stuff like that. So that was a fun grab bag of you could either be in some big, well-established thing or a big commercial or a, a show that is kind of a cult hit. Or just you'd go to some like public library and try to get some like, you know, job where you're getting paid in, you know, Nature Valley bars, maybe, <laughs> you know, you don't know what it is. So it was like what my my first paid job as an actor was Portlandia. And then <laughs> after that, um, you know, I became like SAG eligible, but like, you know, I, I still was just scrambling for just whatever parts I could. So then I'd go to a community college and just be in some little student thing that never saw the light of day. So <laughs> it's that kind of like, okay, you're in this big thing, but that doesn't mean it's smooth sailing from here on out. And that's still how it is to this day. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of a good tonal set. I got, I had some audition for some stage play that was actually some like, sort of like reality show where the the people who were auditioning me were acting weird just to like test my reactions to things <laughs> and then i got offered the part for this play and i was so weirded out by it i'm like i don't know i think this is gonna pop up somewhere i think i'm just not gonna reply to this email <laughs> they're like throwing shoes at me in the audition i'm like i don't know if i want to come back no that's uh that's quite off-putting but you you, you kind of hit the nail on the head when you said about you know the the early part of your career is still very uh, very much the same as today uh, about how how you're in something that's that's big or popular but that doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to get the next job it's it's very much a it's you know it, it's it's an industry that's in, incredibly competitive uh no matter if you are you know uh, voice acting or in front of the camera or any type of acting even obviously working behind the camera as well like i'm i'm a filmmaker myself and i oh, I, yeah. I, I know that you know the next thing isn't always guaranteed um but at the same time you're battling against your peers for that next job but you're also yeah. you've also got to elevate them and support them it's 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 in some cases it's a difficult thing to balance but but also in, in, in the long run, everything that you do, everything that you're doing right now will lead to something great. That's, I think that's the way that you, you definitely totally. look at it. You know, yeah, it's, it's um, like, I mean, for example, this, we'll get into it later, but it's like, this is like saying, I'm like, I didn't, it was all just like happenstance and connections that you don't know lead to what. But hmm. I'll go, you know, hang out with other friends in the industry. And it's a very supportive group as a whole, like voiceover, especially compared to something like on camera. And people are like, it seems like you're doing really good. And then it's like, no, you're doing really good. I don't know what I'm doing. And it's just like, okay, everyone just has a little bit of imposter syndrome. And it's like, you know, I think it's easy for everyone to go like, maybe lose sight of the successes they've had. I know I'm guilty of that a lot. Um, but it's like, oh, maybe that is good that everyone just doesn't realize that they've been impressing other people and uh, maybe they're doing OK. Hmm. Absolutely. Um, so we'll get we'll get into the uh, the elephant in the room. Uh, and that is, of course, uh, the fact that you are the voice of Albert Wesker in Dead by Daylight's uh, Project WDLC. Such an iconic role legendary character yes. um not just in the franchise but in video game history um how uh, we, we sort of alluded to it earlier how has the reaction been for you from fans and obviously we talked about you being inundated with messages on social media but yeah. how how has the genuine reaction of your performance been with those diehard fans have you got great feedback because i think you did a phenomenal job oh thank you so much um yeah i mean i was i was very you know nervous because mm. obviously um there's some big shoes to fill and it's been played by a lot of actors both in voice and on camera so i'm like okay you know there's some good company <laughs> there but um i know um you know i think like there were like leaks and stuff at some point or something. Um, I know that like a lot of times, like with, with whatever thing. And then I, but I saw there was some video and then I was like, okay, well, let's just take a little look at the comments. And then I saw the comments were positive. I'm like, okay, great. Just took a glance. Don't need to look <laughs> at it. 
I think Don't I know what. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, th I, I think I know what video you're alluding to. Um, so I think somebody found the the voice samples in like the some parts of the the PC version of the game, and I actually remember because I'm such a huge fan of Resident Evil. I have been for well, what twenty been around since five, like twenty years. yeah tw twenty like, twenty five twenty six years now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I've been a fan since pretty much day one since it came over here to the UK. Um, so I was like, right, I need to, Albert Wesker is my favorite Resident Evil character. I need to know what he sounds like and whether or not it's, uh, you know, the, arguably the most iconic person, the, the iconic voice of the character is DC yeah. Douglas. You know, he, <laughs> yeah. DC Douglas has been doing it for years right. and I, I listened to it. And I went, that's DC Douglas. And then I, <laughs> I, I, I looked in the comments. I was like, that's not DC Douglas. I was like, whoever's doing this voice sounds just like the Wesker I know. So hopefully that's positive praise for you. Well, that you, you did yeah, an amazing well, job. Thanks. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, you know, since I announced it and like, you know, they knew it was me. Um, yeah. I, there's some super, super nice comments and I'm just like, and they, they, they get very like specific about what they liked. And I'm just like, I was just trying to do it right. I don't know. You know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm glad, uh, you know, it was something like that. You just are so glad that it means something to other people. And it's just mm. like, look, even if you don't like know if you did something right and you don't know <laughs> why you did it right exactly, but it still is right to the person. It's like, well, great, you know? And mm. it's like, that's kind of what it is. Every time a character is reprised, um, you know, there's that central DNA of the character, but then always with a new, if there's a different actor, um, like every major Resident Evil character's had several actors to play it. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some new kind of flair that's just inevitably going to just be a result of another actor, you know, living in that skin. So I'm, I'm just glad they're happy with this iteration. Um, and if anyone is not, I'm sorry, but... Um, I've gotten some really nice messages and it, it's really nice of everyone. Hmm. So, so was it actually, cause I know obviously, uh, behavior have worked in collaboration with Capcom before. Yeah, uh, exactly. And then obviously they, they've worked with other companies like, uh, Konami for Silent Hill and Netflix for Stranger Things. Um, so was it actually when you auditioned for the role, uh, first of all, did you, was it your agent that found it for you or did you put yourself forward or in that case yeah. i actually um in that case i actually got recommended by a casting director um i know um and she's super like generous person she she was knew the people that were trying to um you know fill the role here and she's like hey i think you could be good for this i'm going to put you in touch with them and uh then i got an email and of course it was all very vague mm. um but it's we're looking for someone to kind of match this sound and i'm looking at the links and i'm like huh hold on a second <laughs> I was like, can i ask any can i ask any questions like well we can't really talk about it uh because nda is like okay that makes sense i'm like okay can i do wesker and then I was like, okay, you know, I'll, you know, I'll like, I'll, I'll think about it and come back to it. And then I was like, and then I was just like talking to someone I knew just about, I don't know, something I was like stressed or frustrated about. And then just offhandedly, I kind of went down here and kind of a frust frustrated sort of. And I was kind of like, just kind of made a mental note. I'm like, let's take that back to the mic later um, and uh, see what happens because. <laughs> I kind of accidentally started doing the voice without intending to just talking mm. about my life. So I was like, oh, maybe he was always inside of me. <laughs> He's been there all along for the past 28 years. I, yeah. um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's interesting to hear that you were sent some links saying, oh, can you be, we can't really say much, but here's a similar thing. I'm guessing it was just linked to sound samples of previous iterations or yeah. Cl yeah. clips from the game. So it kind of just gave it away yeah. anyway. Um, but yeah, just speaking to you now, even when when we before we um, started recording the interview, just speaking to you normally, there is that there is that Wesker in your normal voice before you. Even I have know to put it's not that on. Far, it's not that far away, really. That's the it, kind of funny thing. It's like yeah. oh, it's just a, it's a little 
little more of a snarl and you know it's just kind of like you you have this smirk as you talk you know it's just it's it's like oh it's it's almost more half of it's just the attitude because yeah if i go down kind of to the the lower end and the vocal fry a little bit it, it kind of sneaks in and then it's more just kind of like your point of view is shifted and then it all just kind of comes from there and then of course taking inspiration from what came from before of course but mm. uh, i don't know i've played like in shimigami tensei the character for that is hikawa and it's just a similar attitude of like um i know what's best for the world mm. and i've got it don't you worry i've got <laughs> it so uh, just look everything i'm doing is fine and justified and I'm so smart and I've figured it out. So you kind of enjoy yourself a little bit. And, you know, it's annoying when people get in the way. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And was it was it actually um, you going directly through behavior for this? Or did you have any correspondence with Capcom? Because I'm interested because I know obviously recently that stuff that Wesker's been in as a character that DC has played the role. I think most recently we had um, we had um, Teppen on mobile. Um, he reprised the role for that. Yeah. But I, I'm interested in, in in hearing if if this was directly just in collaboration with Behavior, because if it was with Capcom, then maybe we could uh, potentially hear you again. That's it. If if obviously. Well, of course. On that, on that on that sort of front, I couldn't tell you either way. Isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, that's um, bad. <laughs> I will say I was like in a session I'm working with behavior, but Capcom, like any sort of licensing thing, they mm -hmm. they have a final say. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got you got their uh, their seal of approval, which is uh, which I think it, as a as a performer, I guess is is obviously a huge uh, boost to confidence. Oh yeah, as well. it's, it's quite flattering. Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm just I'm interested in hearing if um if you've been a fan of of video games your entire life have you always played video games and if so have you always been a a fan of this uh of resident evil as a franchise so so um for the first front yeah i, was, I played video games and we got a ps2 when i was uh like seven i think and mm -hmm. I think our first game was this game called Kinetica, which uh, was made by Santa Monica Studios, which now, funny enough, makes God of War. Mm -hmm. but, um, uh, yeah, and then my neighbors, I'd watch them play their Nintendos, and yeah, no, I was I was always playing video games. I fell off a bit in college just because mm -hmm. I didn't have it with me, but um, yeah, no, absolutely, I've I've always been playing games. Resident Evil is funny because growing up, the short answer is I have not played one all the way through. And I'm okay. very boomy as we speak, but <laughs> it's mainly out of just because as a kid I was scared of anything horror related. But I had this morbid. I'd go to a friend's house and we'd play like Resident Evil Four, I think. So I'd play it like kind of piecemeal with him and stuff. Yeah. And I could, you know, if I was playing with someone else, you know, and we're sitting on the couch together, it's kind of okay. But um, you know, if, if it was something where I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to like play this at night sometimes, I was like, I don't know if I could do it. But um, on the front of Resident Evil, I've been familiar with Wesker for a long time hmm. because as like, you know, since like high school, I thought I wanted to do this in any sort of kind of villain role like that. I always wanted to be aware of them and watch the clips and stuff like that. So I, I, I've been like aware of Wesker, even if I haven't like played all the way through a Resident Evil game, but I've definitely been aware of the franchise for forever. Hmm. Yeah, ab absolutely. That the... Um... I, I i love that what what you said about the the villain role how you know just just in general wesker is one of the i'm a fan of wesker yeah one, one of the one <laughs> of the all-time great villains and and he truly is ever since you know ever since 1996 he has definitely been in the forefront of of the minds of of gamers for, yeah. for sure um so in this uh, DLC, have you have you played much Dead by Daylight before? Were you aware of that as well before? I'm I, interested. I, so I knew um, my some like streamer friends I knew were into mm. it, and I have I've I'm just rehabilitating myself into multiplayer games. Mm. And then with this coming out, it's like 
oh, I'm going to play it and I'm going to play it. I just, I've just been like, just strapped for time at the second, but I'm going to, I'm, I'm probably, I'm, I'm going to see if I can download it tonight, actually, because I've been wanting to play it. Um, <laughs> I'll be terrible though. So <laughs> question is, will, will you be playing as yourself? Will you be I playing? Think I have to, but <laughs> at least you know, one. Like, if I exclusively play as myself, I'm like, is that egotistical? I don't know. <laughs> He's very, very fun to play as. I will say that because I'm mainly I've a fan. Seen that. I get all the suggested tweets that are like, you know, it, it's just like people talking about like, oh, like his moves and stuff. And I'll get see little video footage of his tentacle business, and mm. that looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I'm mainly a Survivor player, so I've been, I've been playing as uh, Rebecca uh, mainly. Okay, but, yeah. but but the last week, I think I've played. Uh, I obviously played a lot as Wesker in the last few days, and this has been the first time in a long time, because I've played this game since it was in its alpha stages on PC. Uh, I've um, This is probably the most time I've put into playing a killer since since I started playing the game, uh, because, oh. cause, because I love Wesker so much. And the thing that adds so <laughs> much to it, and I, I've, I've got some streamer friends as well who, who have said that, the addition of the voices just adds a whole new layer to the game. So we've had licensed killers in before, but right. nothing like nothing like Wesker. And to to hear to hear those iconic lines, um, one of my favorite lines of the entire franchise of Resident Evil is the seven minutes line. Um, oh. <laughs> so hearing that again to play with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that was that was the thing. See, we're like, you, I, I'm so glad you said the line. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> of course. Uh, and the uh, poor performance is uh, is iconic as well. Yeah. Well, no, you know, of course, I'm. You know, a lot of it's going off of uh, you know the the iconic lines of what came before, which I think's a good move because you're like, okay, we can live in this dead by daylight world, and then plays this French kind of like Stranger Things, you're like. Mm -hmm. I'm playing Stranger Things, the video game. Obviously, West, uh, Resident Evil. There's a ton of games of that, but mm -hmm. like, um, to like be in this sort of playing environment, it's like, well, you, you'd want to hear the lines, right? So, mm. and to Absolutely. hear like the classic lines, it's I, I think that's uh, that's the best way to do it. Mm. Mm. Yes, hundred percent, hundred percent. It it just uh, it adds it adds like I said that that extra layer. Um, I've been you know, running away from. Wesker and I just hear him just absolutely There's no him. point in hiding. <laughs> yeah. Uh just those bits as well when when you're hiding when you, you see him chasing someone across the Raccoon City police station uh <laughs> foyer and and you're hiding behind a box and he's just roasting them as he's chasing after them is yeah it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of, of verbal fun. abuse yeah. <laughs> yeah that is Wesker down to a T he's just uh, yeah. he he's all talk bless him. He's um yeah he's an absolute mm -hmm. legend. It's all smirk. Mm hmm. Yeah, he knows what's best for everyone else. Yeah. Um. So, what were some of your favorite moments in 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 the booth for the for this one? Because obviously, like we've just said, you know, you got to perform a lot of the iconic lines. But what were some of the other moments that really helped you bring your version of Wesker to life? I think especially at the end, after having done all the lines, we, I got to kind of just improvise as Wesker mm -hmm. and I kind of, you know, repurpose some lines and they're like, all right, we'll see what we're going to use for the cinematic. So like, you know, just, um, and just trying different efforts, just, <clears throat> just kind of like the snarls and stuff like that. Cause at that point you feel like you've kind of, you, you've, you've kind of cooked in yourself into the part and now you can kind of move freely. Um, and then also Sebastian was a really great director because he's um, he knows how to do all the efforts so specifically. So he's like, OK, now it's like you're going through a windowsill and you have this little technique where you like you move your shoulders and it like you hear it in the voice. Suddenly it sounds like you're kind of like crawling through something mm. um, or using that as like a frame of reference for an effort. So working with them was really fun. And then just kind of the further along you go the more you just feel comfortable and you're like, okay, so this is like, you know, there's other people that have done it, but at this point you're learning how to live in the skin of the character and you just kind of feel more free. And you're like, oh, your own version's just naturally going to kind of come out as it does. And that's, that's, I guess, what you want as an actor and not uh, worry too much because I, I worry a, a lot. <laughs> no, and like, like we said earlier, that's totally understandable that you would worry taking on the, 
you know, this huge, huge role. Yeah. Um, but like I said earlier, the fact that I could not tell the difference with the Wesker that I've grown to know, you know, that there's, there's always going to be, you know, your idea, your own personal idea. And for you to nail that whilst putting your own spin on it, but also staying true to the original, I think just shows your, your, your talent as, as a voice actor for sure. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. That's, that's why that's why we do it, I suppose. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, one final quick question, right. quite a big one. Your favourite line of dialogue that you recorded that might not have made it into the final version, but what was your favourite dialogue? I think for some reason I were like that. You're merely postponing the inevitable. <laughs> it's that kind of. It's just you get to really feel the poshness of him sometimes. I think just for whatever reason, I'm like, this guy's just, he's just, he's wacky, but we love him for that. <laughs> yeah, that has... the world, and I, I feel it there. It's like, I'm going to get you no matter what. Yeah. You are postponing the inevitable. Yeah. The, uh, that, that just, again, we, we said that, that sums Wesker down to a T. Yeah. He, uh, he, he knows what's best for the world. And to be fair, I'm all for it. I love Wesker so much that if he if he if he was real and he wanted to take over the world, yeah, be do what you need to do. Absolutely, absolutely. Connor, thank you so much for chatting with us today. Um, you did an incredible job, and uh, I, you're welcome. And I look forward to seeing what you do next. And hopefully, um, once uh, the legendary DC Douglas uh, hangs up the. Uh, the, the shades and the black jacket. Um, I think I think we found our uh, our next Albert Wesker. I'm always always happy to do anything anytime. I'll be a I'll be a zombie that just gets sm smashed by a car. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Again, thank you so much for for taking the time today. Thank you. <laughs>